What if rubbing a gel on your penis made it easier for you to get erections? I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and today we're going to talk about a new gel called Eroxon that is now FDA approved for erectile dysfunction over the counter, meaning you don't need a doctor's prescription to use it. How does it work? What's the data on it? And should you try it? So how does Eroxon work? Basically, it's a topical gel that you use a pea-sized amount and you rub it on the glands of the penis. Now, you can do it, your partner can do it, and then you want to do that rubbing motion for about 15 seconds. And how it works is it creates a quick cooling followed by a gradual rewarming. This then stimulates the nerves of the penis, leading to the release of nitric oxide. Now, nitric oxide is essentially the ignition for erections. Nitric oxide essentially creates the cascade, which begins erections, leading to relaxation of the smooth muscles, to mescence or basically filling of the penis, leading to erection. Now, similar to PDE5 inhibitors or medications like sildenafil, tadalafil, Viagra, Cialis, you do need stimulation for it to work. You're not just going to rub the gel on and it's going to work immediately. Now let's get down to the science behind it. So the data that's publicly available and has been published is data from the European Society of Sexual Medicine Congress, which was presented in February 2023. Now this particular study that they presented here looked at 100 patients and they divided them up into a randomized control trial, meaning that 50 men got Tadalafil, which is a PDE5 inhibitor, which causes improved erectile function, and compared it to a Roxon gel. Now, this was completed in 11 different investigational sites, including USA, Poland, Bulgaria, and Georgia. Now, from what I can gather, now the only data we have is abstract form. It's not the full manuscript yet. But from what I can gather, these men had to attempt intercourse at least four times in the last four weeks to identify their baseline erectile dysfunction severity. And they were then categorized as mild, moderate, or severe using the IIEF validated questionnaire. So this is a questionnaire that we use very often in clinical practice to assess people's sexual function. How bad is it based on your answers to this questionnaire? Now, they then followed these men for 24 weeks. They looked at the change in their IIEF score over those 24 weeks. Did they meet the minimal clinically important difference for erectile dysfunction? This is generally established through studies that look at what number change on these validated questionnaires makes a difference to patients, right? Does it make a difference if your score decreases by three points, five points, 10 points? And what is that number exactly? So they looked at this to decide, do patients actually make, does this actually make a clinical difference, not just a numerical difference in the score? And what they found out was that 61% of men across all domains of severity, mild, moderate, and severity saw improvement that met the minimal clinically important difference compared to 87% with Tadalafil. Now, this is not a comparative study to see which is better, but we are seeing a benefit in those who got Eroxon. And interestingly, they also had a secondary endpoint, is how many people were able to achieve the erection within 10 minutes. So this is how it differs from pills. One, there's no real medication that's going into your body. It's essentially creating this warming and cooling action at the skin level, which is then using your own body's physiologic changes to then create an erection. So that's one. Two is it's a lot faster. So typically when you take Tadalafil or Sildenafil, we tell people to take it an hour before you want to have sex because it takes some time to get into the system and be able to be used. Now, the other study I found data on was their clinical trial called the FM57. And this actually looked at a thousand men and they did randomize them to either getting the gel or a placebo. Now, this study was conducted over 60 centers across Central and Eastern Europe and was used to get the FDA clearance. And so with this study, they again did the same thing where people had to try intercourse four times within the last four weeks to establish their baseline. They then saw, again, a statistically significant improvement in erectile function. Now, this was compared to placebo, and this is important because, remember, I've talked about on this channel how placebo can cause a significant increase in erectile function. We know that you can see almost a 40% increase 
in sexual function in people receiving a placebo. So this performed better than placebo. And in 60% of patients, it started working within 10 minutes of application. Now, in terms of side effects, there were very few side effects and none of them were serious. For some reason, some people did get a headache and nausea, but it was really only 4%, whereas people who took Tadalafil and the initial study I talked about had a headache rate of 19%. Now, this is not only approved in the US, but it's also approved in Europe. It's considered a class 2B device under the European medical device regulation, meaning that it can be achieved without a doctor's prescription. Now, other important things to know is that you can use it with condoms, it doesn't degrade condoms, and you can use it during oral sex. So it doesn't create a problem if orally ingested by your partner. The other important thing is you don't have a contraindication with nitrate. So for example, when you take sildenafil or tadalafil, if you take nitrates, meaning a medication that has nitroglycerin or other things in it, for example, people who have chest pain take it underneath their tongue, you cannot be prescribed a PDE5 inhibitor like sildenafil or tadalafil, but it is okay to use with that. It's also okay to use with those medications as well. So I think ultimately, this is a great option for people to try. Now, I haven't been able to find a place to buy it in the United States yet. And as soon as I do, I will link it in the description below. But ultimately, I think this is a great option. It seems pretty safe and maybe effective for 60% of people. And it doesn't actually have any systemic side effects. So that's really great. I'm really excited about all these new options for erectile dysfunction. If you've enjoyed learning about this, make sure you check out my video on Botox for erectile dysfunction. And yes, I mean Botox injecting into your penis for erectile dysfunction. And actually, it sort of works. So check it out and learn more about it. So if you like this, you'll probably enjoy that video as well. And if you're suffering from erectile dysfunction, particularly mild to moderate erectile dysfunction, you may be a candidate for shockwave therapy. Now, I've talked about shockwave therapy extensively on this channel. And shockwave therapy is generally safe and somewhat effective, at least in the short term. Now, we're still figuring out the appropriate protocol, but from anecdotal reports with lots of other urologists, and when using the right device and using it consistently, people are seeing a benefit. So because of this information, I've decided to start offering shockwave therapy in my personal office. If you're interested in getting shockwave therapy, we are offering a promotion of up to $1,000 off your shockwave therapy if you make a new patient visit before January 26th. You can make an appointment at www.renamalikmd.com slash appointments. And if you're enjoying this content, please be sure to subscribe and share this channel with your friends. As always, we're take care of yourself because you are worth it.